Well, so I'm going to just jump right into it today. Uh, so early this morning, I received the really unfortunate news from back in Canada that my aunt passed away early this morning. Uh, it's been a really weird week, uh, you know, a lot of, actually more than a week. I've been everything from fighting with the administration at the hospital to sign off on these permission slips I need basically to be able to go to Canada and visit her to talking with lawyers and all that fun stuff and trying to coordinate travel. That's the hardest part. So many travel restrictions now on both sides of the border, Canada and the U.S., that trying to get up there, visit her and come back was a logistical nightmare. But after like a week, week and a half, I finally like was able to figure out how to do it legally. So in a rush, I booked all of my travel yesterday, spent the day like plane tickets, hotels, cars, calling governments, calling Border Patrol, you name it. And uh, I just got really, really, really tired, really drained by the end of the day. But uh, by the end of the day, I decided, let me just lay down. And uh, I just, I couldn't even move actually by the end of the day because I was just, I didn't, you know, I didn't feel like that big of a deal to me. Like I was just going through the motions. Uh, but then I guess it must have taken a toll on me emotionally that I didn't realize. And, you know, that is part of being an empath, which is we do things that are exhausting, more so exhausting to us than others. Uh, not that this wouldn't be exhausting to your average person. And uh, I fell asleep. I didn't even get to pack. In, normally I would have, well, I usually pack at the last minute actually, but I didn't want to do that this time. But I said, fuck it. I'll just pack tomorrow morning. <clears throat> so I fell asleep on the sofa. Um, didn't even like get to wash my face or anything like that. Do my nightly bedtime rituals. And I fell asleep on the sofa. And mysteriously, I woke up at like four... 4.40 in the morning out of the blue and nothing woke me up. Uh, I just woke up for no, for no particular reason. And I ended up going back to bed. And about 7.30, 8 o'clock, the hospital in Manitoba called. We have some unfortunate news for you. Uh, your aunt has passed away. I'm going to guess uh, that probably she passed away at around 4.40 a.m. when I woke up. That's I've, I've seen that in other... In books, and I've read that with other people where a loved one dies and they suddenly wake up at that instant. So, uh, yeah, she she passed away. You know, they say as a nice thing, oh, she's in a better place now. This time I agree with that for sure. I mean, she she had kind of been suffering a little bit and wasn't in good health. And we didn't want to see that. And her, her wishes certainly weren't that. So, uh, but it was, a you know, I went to my parents' place and told my mom. And so it's been a, been a very somber day. Uh, one of the big stressors in my life, maybe the biggest is my cell phone. Um, just the, the ringing and the people needing me and needing shit. And I said, fuck it. I just turned it off. More or less, I put it on silent. I left it. I did leave it on in case the funeral home or the host, the hospital needed anything. But um, I just, fuck, I just realized how much I hate my cell phone. <laughs> Uh, because, you know, it's time to be present. And, you know, when you're always checking these devices, emails and all this nonsense and letting people have access to you, unfettered access to you, it's really disruptive of your life. And so I went to, you know, console my mom and uh, now we need to sort a lot of things out. Um, they're falling on my shoulders, which is what tends to happen. And, you know, that's fine. I'll deal with it. But it was good. It was a good uh, impetus to step back. And reevaluate things because too often in life we get caught up in the daily routine of that alarm that wakes us up in the morning when we don't really want to wake up the phone call we have to make the emails we have to check the shit we generally don't enjoy doing anymore as the day progresses but yet we do day in day out and it's easy to get caught up in the routine and when we get caught up in those routines, we're basically living life on autopilot. But the problem with living life on autopilot is you're never actually growing. You're never improving yourself. It takes a lot of work. And unfortunately, for a lot of people, we don't really snap out of this hypnosis we're under unless something happens, somebody dies, some tragic event happens where we're like, fuck. And it's in those moments where you just say, fuck it. And you put a pause 
on anybody and everything that needs things from you, all these things that you had prioritized are suddenly thrown in the trash. And you realize when they're no longer priority, nothing bad actually happens. Um, you don't actually get fired. Your business doesn't actually go belly up. Um, all that happens is you get to focus on what's important. And so instead of waiting for bad things to happen, force yourself to take a break to focus and reevaluate yourself, even on a weekly basis. If you're working on meditating, good for you. Keep it up. I haven't been able to conquer that one yet. I'll keep trying. Uh, and that's definitely a good routine to have an inner awakening, if you will. But, um, you know, don't wait for these, these events because there aren't going to be many of them in your life for better or for worse, right? We don't want to have 20 close people or family members die throughout our lives so we can keep waking up every little while to reevaluate and have some introspection. So you need to force it upon yourself. Um, you know, you need to force it upon yourself to start growing and to keep advancing yourself so that you're not living with any regrets, right? You don't want to be that guy or girl who's on her deathbed realizing they spent their whole life in their office or in trials only to find themselves thinking, fuck, why didn't I spend more time with my kids or why didn't I work on this hobby or this passion I had? So try to take those steps back more often. Don't wait for something to force you to do it if you will. So it's been a very somber day, obviously. Uh, I decided to go out in nature and went for a hike up near Hidden Hills here and uh, close to West Hills, which is here in Los Angeles. It was really nice because it's at the edge of the city. There's no nobody around and it's a nice trail. So I went there to collect my thoughts. I drank some coconut juice. I really have no, no idea why I brought coconut juice with me. Um, maybe because my aunt is from the Caribbean and, you know, they're renowned for coconuts, so maybe I subconsciously brought it. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's been a somber day. I've decided to kind of maybe just, I'll take the rest of the week off and watch some nice videos on YouTube. I've been watching this one Indian guy who, I forget his name. I think he's well known. He was talking about how there's no good or bad people in the world. There are simply joyful or miserable people in the world. And why is that important? It's important because once you label somebody as a bad person, you've automatically created an enemy for yourself. So anybody that's not like you, you're supposed to hate. But if you reframe it and look at somebody that's different from you as simply a miserable person, <laughs> it's a bit different. Because let's say you're a good person but you do things that other people consider bad. Does that mean you're a good person or a bad person? Are you a good person that does bad things sometimes? Or are you a bad person that's doing a lot of good things sometimes? Which is it? Because um, in that realm, I could say, well, was Pablo Escobar a good guy just doing some bad things? The good being all the things he did for his, uh, his community that the government wouldn't do, but bad at the same time because he was, you know, obviously refining and making, distributing cocaine around the world or at least in this hemisphere. So which is it? Uh, so try to look at people differently. Try to figure out if they're joyful or miserable. And then more importantly, it's not for you to solve other people. It's for you to figure out which one are you. Um, and you should focus on trying to be a joyful person as much as you can. And if you have been going through your days or maybe you don't even realize it anymore because you've become so numb to your routine and your feelings that maybe you don't even realize over time you've become a miserable person. Like I, I maybe it was early last year or the end of 2019. I just started thinking, man, I was like, has just as adulthood hung, uh, caught up with me because I remember I used to just be, well, you wake up super happy all the time, jumping around, like making jokes and I thought, I just realized, where did that go? And I didn't like it. I didn't like that I wasn't that guy anymore. But uh, an interesting thing happened last year, and that is when COVID hit, 
and business shut down and people weren't out and about and everything quieted down, I noticed I was acting like a the little kid that I think I am still. You know, I'd be doing funny things with my friends. I'd, I'd, I felt very carefree. And I realized that happy, joyful person was still inside of me. It had just been kind of ravaged by um, life, I guess, you know, the, the routine of life, the stresses of life that we get accustomed to. And so instead of waiting for these deaths and bad things to happen for us to take a step back, um, try to find yourself every day. Ask yourself, you know, was I happy at all today? Did I crack a smile voluntarily at all today? What did I do today where I was like legitimately feeling levity and uh, laughing at something and feeling carefree? Did that not happen a single time today? Did that not happen a single time this week for you? And if it didn't, man, you got to make some changes. And I think we all do. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be listening to probably this podcast and other self-help podcasts or books or whatever you're doing. Because life, if there's ever one goal in life, I mean, I think the, the goal of life is to live as long as you can, healthy. Uh, but the other goal is, tangentially to that, is uh, or parallel to that, I should say, is to be happy as much as you can. As, as you know, out of a hundred percent of your lifetime, you should be happy. I don't know, set a goal of ninety nine percent. And you know, year as you grow up, and you know, stresses come up, and life happens, especially in a big city like this, and especially for sensitive people, like it, it's easy to get down in the dumps, and it's easy to lose your uh, joy of life. So. You, and you get used to that. That's the shitty part. Like you get so used to it, you don't really even remember what it meant to just be happy and carefree. So before you get too far down the rabbit hole or too far in life, if you found yourself just miserable all the time now that you're kind of reflecting on yourself, it doesn't mean you have to make some gigantic changes in your life. In my case, as you could see, all that happened with me last year was you know, I started not answering my phone because I didn't have, well, I didn't have to because no one was calling, obviously, because, you know, everything was shut down. But it was that one little thing. And I knew that was the case anything anyway with my cell phone because my happiest moments over the last, you know, decade were whenever I was on vacation. And it wasn't simply just being in a new place with new people and new surroundings and new adventures and all the crazy shit I do. But it was the fact that I wasn't, I didn't feel like a slave to this bell that's hanging around my neck called a cell phone. And I have to do a lot of work. I still have a lot of work to do to condition myself to, I must have some sort of cell phone addiction. Um, this, this need to always need to answer it or when people are calling and stuff like that, I need to just say, fuck it. Um, you know, last few weeks I've had a slew of two or three clients that they don't know what boundaries are and they've been calling a lot unnecessarily. Um, and you know, me being me, I, instead of like being calm about it, I get gradually worked up and until I block their phone numbers, you know, you do not need to call me three times in an hour. Okay. Um, especially if I don't answer any of those fucking three times. So, but my point being, um, for me, my next path is, and it sounds, it's a simple change. I'm just simply not going to answer my phone. I'm going to voicemail and the people that work for me, they will be me. They will be my phone. And if it's something important, I'll let one single human get through to me. Aside from my family, I'll let the lady that works with me, I'll let her, I'll let her get through to me. Everybody else can wait. Um, but that's it. So look at what changes you can make. I always talk about these little changes. One of my favorite movies, uh, Vanilla Sky with Tom Cruise. There's a line in it at the end of it where, you know, he, Tom Cruise is coming to the realization about something. I won't ruin the movie for you, by the way, but if you have not seen it, fantastic movie. Uh, Tom Cruise, Penelope Cruise, also in it. And uh, very, uh, very cool movie to watch. Like, don't just watch it. Like, watch it, listen, and think about it. And it, it's kind of a takeoff of the other bo the book. I think it was a Spanish book or Spanish movie called Abre los Ojos, which I haven't seen yet, but I still want to see, still want to watch. But any, anyhow, he comes to a re realization at the end of the movie and he, he says, life, 
the little things. There's nothing bigger, is there? And I think he may have ripped that off of Kurt Vonnegut. I think Kurt Vonnegut may have said that, but it is true in life. We're always thinking about things we think is big. That gazillion dollars we want to win in the lottery or that huge house we want to buy or that fancy car we want to buy so some asshole can rear us and take off. Um, we think those are big things. We think these financial goals are big things. We think material goods are big things. And it's because we think those... Things will bring us that joyfulness, will bring us happiness, but we both know that's not true. I remember my dream car was the Acura NSX and like, oh, I really want this car. And I remember I finally got one. I finally got an an NSX some years ago. And uh, truth be told, as soon as I got it, I didn't give a shit about it anymore. That's true. And sorry if you're an NSX fan. I know you guys are really into your NSXs, but... uh, after I got the car, I, I, I parked it. I drove it a few times. I'm like, okay. And it didn't really. And to be honest, anything would bring me happiness. But I thought it would. I'd, I'd enjoy driving it more and whatever else. And I didn't really give a shit, which is why over the years I've. I don't really collect material things anymore. If you were to see my house, I mean, my house is like half empty. I hardly have anything in here, including furniture, because I just like open space. Um. Because buying shit doesn't really make me feel good. So buying adventures, though, and, and travel is another story. That's what I do like buying that shit. But anyway, so look, look at these things. Look, at for, look for the little things. Look for those moments and those little things that you can adapt in your life to potentially bring you more joy. Or get rid of those little things that are taking away from your joy. Because sometimes it's just a little thing every day. Maybe you... Go down the street and every day you start off day bad, the day bad because it's hard to pull out of your street onto the main street because there's no traffic light and it starts your day off bad. Well, here's an idea. Take another street. Even if it takes another mile, take another street. Break up your day. Break up your routine. So I think that's all I wanted to say today. Uh, Going to keep a, keep the mood a bit somber. Nothing to be excited about, but... Uh, yeah, I mean it's it's unfortunate, and uh, you know you got to make make the best of what you got. Uh, I hope my my aunt lived a a good life. I mean, from I've known her. I was looking at a picture of her holding me as a little baby, and I'm just gonna remember her like that because I know inside she tried her hardest. So that's today's episode. Uh, take from it what you will and uh, keep looking for that joy and never never stop never stop looking and never stop expanding on it. That's it for today. Thanks for listening.